popcorn and candy. Hey there, movie fans, and welcome to the next episode of Popcorn and Candy. Today, we're going to discuss one of my favorite movies as a kid growing up. You may have heard of it. It's called Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. For those of you unfamiliar, this movie was originally released in 1989. It was the first anime movie to receive a wide release in the U.S. and definitely set the groundwork for a lot of future anime to come out. So for all you anime fans, this is definitely worth a watch and something that may pique your interest. Now, this movie did suffer a bit through its production, having hands and names as big as Studio Ghibli involved in the making of this movie. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Studio Ghibli, they're the fantastic company that brought us movies such as My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, and many, many more. Now, the plot of Little Nemo is one that's pretty simple. Our main character, Nemo, is a young boy who suffers from nightmares pretty often. And in one of his dreams, he's actually invited to Slumberland by the King Morpheus. Now, part of that is to be a playmate to the princess, but the other part is to be the king's eventual heir to Slumberland. With this responsibility, there is a key that is entrusted to him. Now, what's really interesting is this key is the most literal key to the city in which it can open any door in Slumberland. However, there is one door he is instructed to never open, and that is the door that has the same symbol on it. What does Nemo eventually do? He opens this door and unleashes the Nightmare King. So we can see where the story is going to go, the trouble that's going to happen from it. But the way it's done, the way it's executed, it's so well written. It's so thoughtful. And it really was one of those movies that as a kid, I never got tired of. Now, one of my favorite characters in this movie is going to be King Morpheus. Now, what's very interesting is that that name actually derives from mythology as the god of dreams. So we can literally see the ties to mythology in this movie and see how the literal god of dreams is bestowing upon Nemo the responsibility to be king of slumberland and to protect his world now of course this is all a kid's dream but it's really nice just to see those little connections that adds just a little more depth to what in all terms is basically a kid's movie now on the subject of favorite characters over the years there's been plenty of great animal sidekicks we've had hey hey from moana we've even had abu from aladdin and two of these are some of the ones that i've loved over the years but one of the best is none other than icarus now, Icarus is the only friend that Nemo has from the real world who accompanies him throughout his journey. And Icarus is the definition of not only a animal sidekick, but a true friend to Nemo, being there with him from the beginning to the end of his journey, and just overall being just a fantastic addition to this story. Now, while doing my research on this movie, I was really surprised to find out that this was actually based off an old comic strip. So... I've never read it. I don't know many people who've even heard of that, let alone seen it. But it's nice to know that the source material did come from something and was able to be turned into such a fantastic movie and just a really great, what I consider classic. My kid personally loves this movie and it's one that I'm just glad I've been able to share with her and just bask in that nostalgia with her as she relives those moments along with me of Nemo's adventure in Slumberland. So that's going to be it for today's review on the movie Little Nemo. Again, this is a kid's movie, so it's one that I'm not going to delve too, too deeply into just because I don't really want to uh, over-explain or uh, kind of cheapen the experience. I really do hope you get to see this movie because, as I said, it definitely is the kind of movie that had a huge impact in the U.S. Nowadays, we get movies like My Hero Academia or Dragon Ball that get not only wide releases, but even released in theaters. And this was the first movie to do that. Granted, before Little Nemo, there were anime TV shows that were out in the U.S., such as Thundercats and Astro Boy, but this was the first movie to receive a wide release, so definitely something worth noting. And obviously, like I said, studios such as Studio Ghibli even had a hand in it at one point, and you can see now just the amazing company that Studio Ghibli has become. With that in mind, guys, I really want to thank you for joining me on this movie. I hope that's one that you get to add to your favorites list as one that's worth not only a watch, but a rewatch and one to keep in your movie collection. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.